Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio, space exploration with Crastorio 2, as ever sponsored by Trefoil.be. So, had some rather unfortunate luck in the last stream. Um, we were part way through when suddenly the uh, the server crashed when one of the uh, research is finished, which appears to be due to some sort of collision between a couple of the mods. So we, we've recovered from this now, we've got back basically every, everything we'd done, but unfortunately it did, meant we lo did mean we lost about most of an hour of progress, so given how long we normally play for, we've, we, we, did, we, only, we, we, weren't, we weren't going for as long as normal, so we've not been up to quite as much as we would otherwise have been. However, in that time I still did manage to get some stuff done. As you can see here, I've come off to another planet, this one with the unlikely name of, where on earth am I here, this one, uh, Taisha Kuten, which I'm eventually going to learn and remember. And so out here, I've, uh, I've, I've got, I, uh, I, I flew out here, and this is one of the, getting ready to come here was actually one of the biggest jobs of the entire, of, of the entire stream, because I built up a rocket and I loaded it up with all the stuff I was going to need and, and, uh, and to bring it all out here with me. And that was done through the, the fairly standard way you would you, you, you do that sort of thing in, um, in, in space exploration. I had a rocket, a rocket silo here with a blue chest hooked up to it, and as I thought of things that I wanted to take with me, I attached them to the, I, 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 I programmed them into the blue chest, uh, they'd be brought out to here, and then they'd be loaded into the rocket. Now we've got two different rockets here, there's uh, two rocket silos as you can quite clearly see, plus the one down here which goes up to orbit, but we're not worrying about that one. So these two are, this, this is the one that uh, Tristan's been using, and on the other side is the one that I've been using, and I've just nicked the rocket fuel from his to pass over into mine, that, that's absolutely fine. And you can see this one's, this one's set up to fly to Drakit, this one's set up to fl fly to Taisha Kuten. Um, and so what we've done here, with all this cabling in the in the middle here, is a is a, is a uh, slightly overly elaborate system because we're so sh we were at least at the time so short of blue chests. So what we've got here, as I shall I shall demonstrate, is a cunning system cunning system of, of circuit setup. So if we if I tr the interesting thing is though, if I go into this chest here and try and program it, it won't let me do this. It won't let me program it over the navsat, and we suspect that this is probably due to the uh, the way the um, because we haven't researched blue chest yet. So there's probably some weird interaction going on there that means I just can't program these things remotely. However, if I come down here and I say, for example, I want to have some um, uh, life support systems, life support facilities. Let's say I'd like to have four of those like that. Um, I can put that onto here and that's then hooked up to this chest which is saying setting requests from that. So that is a, is a roundabout way of selecting that. So then these get brought over to here but they're not being loaded into either of the rockets. We've then got these two things down here. This one's got an L on it, this one's got a T. If I set, if I turn the L one on then it's going to turn on this inserter and this inserter and this inserter. So basically the ones that are putting stuff into my rocket silo. These ones down the middle get turned on if anything is, is activated, um, and so those will be turned on if we turn on either the L or the T. But as it is, if I flick that one to on, then as you can see, those very quickly all got loaded into this rocket. So the idea of this is you can put your shopping list into this system over here, and as you see some more of them brought over, and they'll be immediately loaded in. I know this is all going a bit wrong, so I want to, I want to actually turn this one off again. Those will then be brought over, and at that point, I can then delete the requests from here, so it stops loading them in. Then I should be turning this one on, and that means you can order all of the stuff you need for your build. That will all be put into the chest here. You can then turn this one off, and then or delete the stuff from it that you've, you've already got. Then turn this one on, and it'll load all of those things into the rocket, so they get taken away. And you don't have that that rather silly problem where stuff gets brought out, put in the chest, and loaded in, and then more of that but gets brought out and, and loaded into the and loaded into the rocket. So you end up with many times what you're expecting to have. Now you can also do that by taking the um, the contents of the rocket, running it through a, a, a an arithmetic combinator, and multiplying multiplying it by minus one, and then passing it back into the into into here again. Um, and that's, to be honest, is probably what we should have done, or is a thing we should have done as an expansion. This is more here to allow us to load up both rockets from the same system. So, firstly, if I'm going somewhere, then then I can use it to load up my rocket. And then when Tristan wants to go somewhere, he can make sure the L is turned off, turn the T on, and load up his rocket instead. So it, it allows us to use the uh, use the same blue chest for both both of us because we, as I said, we were very very short at the time. Since then, Tristan appears to have found another one and set that up for just his rocket, which seems very selfish. And maybe I should just say, well, in that case, this one's mine. But eh, never mind. I'm not feeling quite that petty. <laughs> so we've got the blueprints. I had we, I talked about these a bit last time. But we've got this one here. This blueprint is designed to turn everything. Uh, it is designed to turn core fragments into um in, into into into, uh, into delivery cannon capsules. Um, and it almost does that just on completely on its own. So the idea is is it takes in the it takes in the core fragments and then it turns out it turns them around, crushes them down, gets all of the raw resources out of them, and then processes all that. Up to the point where it can turn them into delivery cannon capsules, which is a fairly complicated process, as you can see by the sheer number of bits and pieces that are going into this design. But it can do that 
almost completely. Unfortunately, it does also need a supply of um, of oil to be fed into it. And my first thought was, that's fine. We'll we'll get that oil from the um, from the coal that's coming out. But we're not actually making enough coal from this. When you crush, crush the core fragments, it only just produces enough coal to make the plastic and possibly the oh, and the explosives. Um, so there isn't enough coming out to then make all the other bits and, uh, to, to be turned into oil to make well to make to make more oil for the rest of the plastics and the explosives and the and the acids and the other all the other things that go into it. So unfortunately, we're have, going to have this is going to need a supply of oil to be brought into it. That can either be done by having an oil mine if you've got if you've got some oil patches on your planet, or with a coal mine and then using coal liquefaction, which we haven't actually researched yet, so we can't technically do that yet. But we will be will be able to fairly soon. So there are, there's a little bit of flexibility in there, and there's different ways you can do these things. Um, but other than that, it's a little it, it it is going to be able to produce those delivery cannon capsules for us. The question is, is it going to be able to produce them quickly enough in order to ship out all of the uh, the stuff that's made at the same time from the same core fragments? And we shall wait and see, I think. We'll, we'll wait and see once we've got that set up. And the other thing we've got is the uh, 70 megawatts free power. I've got, th this is the, the basically the same as the um, as, as the modules we're using down here on Norvis to generate our free power from, from wood and solar and stuff. Um, but this is a slightly bigger version of it that produces a little bit more power. So I thought, sure, I'll, I'll go for the big one. Why not? So that's that. That's I uh, chucked that. In. I chucked all the ingredients for that into the uh, into the rocket and took them over with me to the other planet. Now this was made slightly harder than it should have been because we had the uh, logistics request manager mod installed until quite recently, and that's the one that allows you to open up a chest and then take a blueprint and copy it into the logistics request for that chest. So then when you when uh, so then the, the the chest will then automatically have all of the all of the ingredients you need for that build and it'll pull them all in and then you can then chuck them into the rocket easy. Unfortunately, that's the mod that seemed to be causing the crash when combined with one particular research in this game. So we took that out because we didn't want to lose another hour of playtime because that was incredibly frustrating. So a lot of this lot of this I did have to do by hand, which is even more time consuming and was a bit frustrating. But I have now got out here onto um Taikashu Taika Shuten and drop down the blueprint and unfortunately it's got dark which means we no long, longer no, we now no longer have power um, because we, I'm only using solar power out here at the moment but we've got a good start on this blueprint going down now we should have absolutely everything we need but unfortunately um, I've dropped well I dropped down a load of these yellow chests to un unload the um, the 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 uh, the, the the rocket silo into the rocket landing pad into and it seems to have taken out everything except the pipes and the belts um which is rather unfortunate because i kind of need the pipes and the belts there's a lot of rail there's a lot of wood there's a lot of other there's some stone for some reason I, oh because the stone has all been ripped up from over here so maybe if i go along here and take out all the stone out of these storage chests and and um oh no wait this this is my this is my my inventory no that's not going to work so yeah, a little bit of shuffling stuff around is going to be required here. Maybe if I've got... Do I have any more of these chests? I've got another three of these chests, so I could put these in... Not like that. These in over here like this. Put in some more inserters like that. Program them up. But we still don't have any power because, as I said, night has fallen. As you can see, if we look at this this bar, we can see the power went up a bit there. And then I put in a... I'm not... I don't know exactly how this works. But yeah, the, the, the power has then dropped off fairly sharply here as night time arrived. Ah, now now dawn appears to have struck, uh, which is quite nice. So we're starting to generate a little, get a little bit of power up and running now. So um, gradually we will then be able to start these things running again. You see they're running very, very slowly because there's not enough power. But we will charge up the... Um, charge the robot back up again and then as we get the pipes out the robots will fly out and start laying everything again and within there we go now we've got a decent amount of power because there does seem to be quite a bit of power available on this planet um minus 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 two percent it's almost as much as on Norva. It's very very close because we are if we look at the map we are we're here on taisha kuten we are very very close to Norvis. we're about the same distance away from away from kalidas the sun so we've got about the same amount of power down here on the planet we're doing we're doing okay but I have had to use the, uh, the, the the basic solar panels here because we haven't developed anything better yet. But now, as you can see, we are currently unloading the um, the underground belts, so those are getting shipped out now and being put into the into the build. Once that's finished, we'll fairly quickly start getting the, um, the the belts out as well, and we can get this thing finished off, and then we can start actually making power, and that'll be rather nice. Yes, it will, because I've been um, at the moment the amount of power we've got is rather limited. Let's link, let's link all of this up because I think it needs to be like that. There we go. And now we should hopefully be able to start building the um, the actual free power supply. Oh no, we're still missing the bells. Never mind. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've now hooked in all of these all these greenhouses to the power supply as well. So whilst we have 2.8 megawatts being generated, and that is almost peaking, um, 
we've only got we, we need 23 megawatts and so this isn't really going to work which is why I brought out all this wood so the theory is now I can go along here I can take the wood out of all these chests like this and then um, oops and then I can take I can take the wood and I can chuck it into which machines is it it's these ones put it into all of those and then they will start creating the um, start creating the what do you call it gas the biomethanol that's needed to actually start generating the power now we are also apparently rather short of um, where's the oh this thing up here this this machine is running rather slowly because again because of the low power but this is what's producing the oxygen in order to get these machines running so once this finishes we should get a burst of biomethanol and then a burst of power which should allow everything to start running a little bit more effectively at least briefly I oh, know we need steam as well. Oh, I haven't hooked up the water. Okay, so before any of this starts to actually work properly, I'm going to need to hook up the water. And this is a slight, a slight mistake I made. Because this blueprint has just the stuff for this module on, I didn't bring any of the um, duct uh, inputs. So this, this massive duct over here doesn't have any, anything to bring water into it. However, because there's only sort of one of these things in here, I don't think I care about that. I can just get rid of all of this and just pipe my water straight into the bottom of here and then it'll propagate through all the rest of this and hopefully we'll be able to make some steam from that. So that'll be that'll require a an offshore pump, which I know I've brought with me, but apparently it's out of... Oh no, it's not out of Roboport range. And then a little bit of pipe like this and some power like... And hopefully now this will this will mean we'll get water throughout every, everywhere where we need it. Up here somewhere we'll start producing the steam. Do you have water? You don't have water. Okay, so a little bit of finagling and fiddling is going to be required in order to get all of this working. But I think it might just be that all of these machines are, are grabbing all... These uh, greenhouses are grabbing all the water. So we'll notice these have all kicked in properly. But the water doesn't seem to be getting passed around through all the rest of the system. So I'm going to need, yeah, I'm going to need to have a bit of a look at this to get this working properly because at the moment it's Oh, actually, no, it is spreading. You can see, you can see, I can see the trees growing before my very eyes. <laughs> but they are, of course, grabbing all of the water like this before they pass any of it on to anywhere else. But once they get up to enough to start actually growing some trees, and then presumably fill themselves up to the 1.3 thousand that they need, it'll gradually spread out. And then eventually, yes, there we go, there's some steam running. So now these machines can probably start working. Oh, no, those ones don't have wood. These ones can start working. Once, but again, once we're again we're waiting for the steam to make it all the way down round round here to get to the machines that actually need it. If I'd known, I'd have put the wood in the machines up here. But in, you know, get, we're getting there. So we need 120 steam in here, and we're like 10% of the way to that. <laughs> However, you can see that now, as now that everything has been unloaded from the uh, from the rocket landing pad, the bots are now able to fly out. There's enough power for them to build everything up. We haven't built these um the the uh what what are these things the um. Oh, there we go. These, now these machines start to kick into life and actually generate power. Now this is going to be a little bit temporary because there's only so much wood available. But for as long as the as long as the wood lasts, we are going to be able to build up a bit of power in these um, in, uh, in, from the from these generators and hopefully get a bit of a kickstart on the uh, on the power generation that we need in order to make things start working down here. So if we now have another look at the power graphs, you can see there we go. The gas power station's kicked in again because we've made a burst of biomethanol from somewhere. This will be these these bursts will hopefully get bigger and longer as we get as the system gets sort of kicked up more and more into action and things start to work a bit more a bit better and a bit more effectively. And as you can now see, we are ha we have full satisfaction on the power supply here, and this is going to be absolutely fine until we run out of wood. And I'm concerned that we are going to run out of wood at some point, but um, before these actually start, before these actually manage to produce any trees. Although actually, that said, looking at this, we're 84% here, so maybe not. Maybe this is going to actually be, the uh, the wood I chucked in here is going to be sufficient to get this whole system kick-started, and then we're not going to need to worry about power. I'm not quite sure why these haven't been placed. Maybe we ran out of um, maybe we ran out of uh, solar panels or something. But anyway, yes, this is how I'm getting started on on a remote planet. Fly in here, put down some solar to get the uh, to get the robots up and running. Use those and, and use that bit, that little dribble of power to empty out the uh, cargo landing pad into some um, yellow chests. Get everything. Get a uh, power power plant built up like this. And then I can start going in and think about well the next thing to do will be to will be to produce, will be to put down this blueprint the um, the, the the capsule uh, creation system so maybe I'll put that in here I probably won't put it in here in the long term but for now for demonstration purposes I can drop that in there and then we get have another bot absolute bot frenzy of going out and clearing up all of the um, all of the miscellaneous rocks and things that are out there but then we'll see all the all the bots flying out and starting to build this blueprint up for me 
And so this this is then going to take in, as I say, he's going to take in the core fragments at the top here. There's a an output here for presumably this is all of the junk that we don't want. Um, and then there's an oil input up here somewhere and oh, probably a water input up there, which I've plumbed in rather badly, but never mind. We'll see if we can cobble that in in a different way. And this should get the whole system up and running nicely. So that's going to be my plan. Then I can go off around the rest of the planet um, and pick up all of these core mining patches. And th there's a little bit of it. I haven't made the decision yet. I've brought out resources for both, but I could potentially either link these up with train, with railway lines, which I think is probably what I'm going to do, or with belts, or perhaps a combination of the two. So maybe these three would. Maybe I'll have one station down here, and then I'll link some of the closer ones together, like these two, um, and, and, and run, the, run them by uh, run them together by belt, and then onto a rail system. Because this is quite a small planet, as you can see, so we're not going to produce core fragments particularly quickly. But hopefully, it's going to be enough to keep the whole system down here, up and running, and just just working nicely. I also spent a bit of time going around the planet, exterminating biters, which was kind of fiddly if I'm being honest um, because it's really hard to spot them um, so what we en we ended up with I think the other three guys just looking around the planet in navsat mode so just sort of looking around like this try trying to find those biters uh, with me sort of then scanning around on the map trying to also looking for looking for red and the problem is red splodges are kind of hard to spot because this is red and this is red and okay the bright biters are a paler red than the um they're a lighter red than this this um, vol volcanic whatever it is that we're supposed to be. this is red red ground but they're about the same red as this vulcanite so I kept there was one patch yeah this this patch of vulcanite here this 14,000 vulcanite I kept seeing that and going aha I found it and then I'd zoom in and go oh no wait that's that patch of vulcanite again goodness sake so yeah clearing out the biters from this planet was a challenge it, was, it wasn't difficult from a combat point of view but finding the last couple of worms after I'd gone around and taken out all the nests was really infuriating and as you can see from this little clip here from the stream um dealing with the uh, biters with the lightning gun is a kind of messy process because the lightning gun likes to target rocks as well and because this is a volcanic planet there's a lot of rocks on it a lot of rocks you need to deal with um, so yeah as you can see this this whole pro this whole system over here is now gradually getting built by the robots as is the as is the way this is what what they're there for um, and then the excess ores that come out of here, I shall smelt them all down into more sensible in, into the actual metals because then they'll be a lot easier and a lot denser to transport. Uh, and then those can also be, also go out in the delivery cannons as well. So it is going to be very interesting to find out how that goes. As I touched on in the uh, in, I think in last week's video, processing vulcanite is an interesting process. So you get the vulcan the vulcanite can come out of these core fragments, which is what I'm going to be digging up. You get out your vulcanite plus some stone, some pyroflux, core, core, core fra and more importantly the core fragments. So the core fragments then go go through the system as I said, get turned into delivery cannon capsules. Fine. The vulcanite, you cr then crush that. It turns into crushed vulcanite and enriched vulcanite. Very small amounts of enriched vulcanite. You then have to get more enriched vulcanite by running the vulcanite enrichment process in a um, in a, a, a centrifuge, which is going to require some sulfur, and this is going to be annoying because I don't think there's going to be any spare sulfur coming out of this. But if there is, maybe I, I might try and snaffle it. But if, and if, especially as I'm going to be bringing in um, oil anyway for this system. Um, but then that this is a kind of Coverex type process because it turns the good stuff and the cheap stuff into more of the good stuff and less of the cheap stuff. So we're going to be running lots and lots of that in centrifuges um, in order to boost that up. Because then the other thing you can do with this is then turn the crushed vulcanite and the enriched vulcanite along with some water and some more petroleum gas so definitely going to be needing some more um, uh, gas processing around here you can turn that into some vulcanite and a bit of steam so this steam and the pyroflux that comes out of pulverizing the vulcanite we're probably just going to turn that into power because why not it's that or vent it basically but then these vulcanite blocks will stack you can fit a lot more into a delivery cannon or rather if you take a certain amount of core fragments you can fit you can fit 20 core fragments into a into a delivery cannon capsule, I believe. If you crush them and turn them into crushed vulcanite or into vulcanite, you can fit a bit more in. If you then crush that into vulcanite into proper into crushed vulcanite, you can fit more of that in, and so on. So each extra stage you go through, you can fit significantly more in your delivery cannon capsule. And so that is why we're going to be going through all of these processes up to the vulcanite block step here, and then shipping it in the, in, in this state because that's going to get me a lot more transported per um, delivery cannon than if I than if I transport the earlier stages of it. So, uh, and that's generally the case in, uh, in actually most Factorio mods. The more you process something, the more efficient it then is to ship it. And it looks like my coming out here with with all, everything I thought I needed it didn't didn't bring me all the modules I thought I needed, which is a bit unfortunate because I was fairly sure I thought about modules, but apparently I um apparently I didn't and just don't have any of them. So that uh, there's some efficiency ones there, but 
yeah, clearly I don't have the modules I wanted. So maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll ask somebody to put them in another rocket, or I'll put them in another rocket myself and get that shipped out to me. The final thing, and this is actually a little bit out of sequence, but um, in order to get over here, I used the um, there there is there is a system in 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 space exploration 0.6 where you can use the um, the, the the rocket capsules, which I'm never going to find in all of this. Here it is in my inventory. Right, you can use the uh, the rocket capsules, and you can say you can you can use them for hopping around the solar system in in, in sort of little little but jumps. So, for example, from here, if I want to, I can go from here to Taishakutan orbit. It'll take me. I'll only be able to take 28 pieces of cargo with me, including what's in the rocket rocket uh, capsule itself. Although fuel is free, um, I can take. It'll take nine first stage pieces. It'll take and it'll take 102 fuel, but solid fuel. But this is still going to be a lot cheaper than using an entire rocket it to go one way or the other so in order to you know what the way I came out here was I used that to hop up to um, to do in multiple hops I, I went for actually I took the big rocket that supplies Norvis orbit up to get to get to Norvis orbit um, because that uses a lot of fuel and a lot of rocket parts it seemed like a cheaper way of doing it certainly an easier way of doing it I then used the uh, capsule to fly from there to area orbit and then to Dracut orbit and then to Taishakutan orbit and each time I had to make sure there was enough fuel in it and put in some extra rocket uh, cap rocket sections in order to make those little hops so I brought out some stacked ones with me and I unpacked some of them and I think I ended up leaving one in area orbit because I didn't have enough um, enough space in the inventory to bring it all with me but eventually I made it all the way out to Taishakutan and then could drop down onto the surface once I got there I could then put down this rocket landing pad and that meant I got to choose where my first rocket landed so instead of having the rocket crash land at a random place on the planet which would probably be probably knowing my luck would probably have been over here and then I'd have to ca somehow carry all of the stuff the power supply down over here to where the big lake is Instead of that happening, I was able to put down the landing pad exactly where I wanted it, and this also meant that when the rocket landed, it didn't crash land, so I got virtually all of the stuff that I wanted to bring over here to make the system work, which is very nice, very much appreciated, and um, yeah, basically meant, meant uh, in theory, meant I didn't need to bring out a second rocket, but since I appear to have forgotten all of the... Um, all, all of the modules that go into the system, I'm going to need... it looks like I'm going to need to bring those out anyway, so... Um, oops, I guess. <laughs> we'll get that sorted out sooner or later, though. Uh, also, back on Norvis, before I left, while I was waiting for my rocket to fill up, I came over here and I actually finished off this um, this, this lithium producing system over here. Well, more or less finished it off. Um, so I got everything built up. I built up a station here to bring in the, um, the what do we call it, mineral water. It looks like I have not set the station up properly because we've got far too much of it has arrived. What's going on there? Ah, that F in there I forgot to set. As, as, that F needs to be set from being an F to being a mineral water. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but yes, so what we've got over here, we've got the uh, a machine here that pulverizes sand, uh, stone down into sand. And I realized that because the chlorine goes round and round and round and round and round, never actually gets used up, I don't need a train bringing stone in here. I don't need a huge supply of stone. So I just dumped what I had in my pockets and then ripped up, knocked out a few of these rocks and dropped the stone in from those in, into here. That got made into sand, goes up here. The sand and the water gets turned into uh, hydrogen and chlorine. The chlorine gets stored in a tank here. The hydrogen and the chlorine then also get turned into um, hydro hydrogen chloride here, but with the with, through these machines, which then gets combined with the mineral water and turned into lithium sulf lithium chloride. That's this powdered stuff, which we can then pass out here into all of these machines along here, which then turn that into lithium and chlorine. Chlorine then comes back down here, goes back into the tank, where we've got 1.7 thousand, which isn't quite as much as I would have liked to have, but yeah, no, it'll do. Um, because then the chlorine does not get used up, so it gets passed back round here, so we don't need to make more of that from the sand, but we do need the hydrogen. So then down here, I have these machines here turning water, electrolyzing water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen comes up here, gets turned into more in, into more um, hydrogen chloride, again, goes round round the uh, get, again to make more of the lithium chloride stuff. The oxygen... We get to that ticket taken away by a long pipe that runs all the way over here, and then that goes into these tanks. We haven't, we've actually made quite a bit of that, and we're not, don't seem to be using any rocket fuel, which is a bit problematic because the, the the theory was that then this would all get turned into rocket fuel. But I see actually with the way this is working, this machine down here at the bottom isn't going to run unless we're using absolutely loads of it. So, um, yeah. That's slightly unfortunate. I should have piped this in and put it into the top machine because then this would be the one that gets used first. That's um, slightly problematic. Uh, okay, so that's something I, I will need to fix and get that stuff to be used up here. But the idea is the oxygen will get used up out of these tanks first because this, this pump here will only run if there's a small amount in these tanks. Um, and then we can get that dealt with and used used to make make the rocket fuel and just it's basically an oxygen sink, so we don't need to so we don't need to vent it because I felt venting was a bit wasteful. 
Uh, right, yes, yeah, so this station over here. The standard blueprints we have for stations look like this. The, for the fluid or fluid drop-off stations, um, you can't really see it yet hit for, on, on this view. But if you look at the um, the all the accumulator, sorry, the combinators in the bottom right on this on this blueprint, you'll see they're all covered in blue squares. Now those blue squares, some of them are Fs and some of them are Ls. The Ls are okay because this is re what we've got here is this thing is watching for Ls to say how what the train limit should be set to. Down here, we're bringing in. Uh, there was an F in here, which I've set to be mineral water with the same number. There was an F here that I've turned into a mineral water as well. I missed out this one because apparently I'm a muppet. So this needs to be outputting it is it's the, uh, the what's coming in as a, as a as a mineral water, not as an F, because then this math otherwise because it is this maths doesn't work, and so we're just asking for infinite trains. Um, I'll sort that out in the next um, stream, but I just didn't know didn't notice that that extra F that needs to be fixed. Um, so yes, we are. What's going on here is that we've, we've still got the uh, the copper coming out of this this um, patch here. There's 1.7 thousand left, so it's very nearly finished. So fairly early on in the next stream, I'm going to be able to um, empty all of this out, get a train to come out here, pick all, pick up the pick the last bit of it up because there is only uh, 6.9 thousand, which is probably and there's going to be about 8 8 thousand. That's almost enough for a train. So we might get a train coming in and taking nearly all of it away or not. We'll we'll see. But then once that's done, it'll be very, very easy to then put a, um, a loader into here and, this, and switch this over to being a lithium station instead of a copper station. I think I probably won't even need to change... Oh, I'll need to change the, uh, the name of the station. That is basically the only thing I'll need to change, but I do need to do that quite quite quickly and early on before a train comes over looking for copper and picks up a load of um, lithium instead. That would be quite unfortunate. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are making the lithium here quite happily. That's going to be needed for the production science, as I said, and I'm sure it's going to be needed for batteries as well, because that's the sort of obvious thing you think of when you hear when you think about lithium. Um, and currently, there's actually almost half filled this warehouse, so that's coming along quite nicely, and we're going to have a decent supply of that available. We also had a coronal mass ejection come in, as we've been expecting for quite a long time. The um, the uh, the coronal mass ejection backup power thing worked admirably with only one slight problem so <laughs> it struck first before we um, before we had the um the unfortunate crash incident and it turns out that it, it seems that these things will take all of their power from the first power network first then the second power network then the third power network so what ended up happening was it took it from the main the main factory power network and to, and, dra and drew and basically took all of the power from that one and when that was really starting to struggle it then started to take it from the accumulators up here then it started to take it from the um from the turbines down here so it did in fact take it did in fact use power from everything but it used it in the wrong priority order we were hoping that it would not cause anything to brown out so it would just take it from every it would take it from all of them until they were all sort of maxed out but not but then once this one once the main network started to run out of power it would then take it all from here that turned out not to be the case so we've removed the pylon that was linking it to the main network so now what happens is it kicks in it sure it takes it takes as much power as it can from the accumulators up here first which is I mean that's okay. We don't really care about that because the, that, that that's that's fine. We, we we don't mind pulling the power out of the accumulators. Um, but it so it it, um, it actually didn't drain those. What that meant was it took as much power from these as it could. But accumulators have the same charge and just discharge rates available, and we had enough available power in the main network to charge all of these accumulators up as fast as they were being discharged. So <clears throat> the this system took the the current the uh, umbrella defense took as much power as it could from these. Um, and they, but they were being charged up but then that wasn't enough power for it so it then starts to take power from down here so that was i mean to be honest that was fine we, we, were, we were very happy with it working like that that was that was okay but you can see if i have if i now have a look at this if we go back a few hours um okay it was apparently it was it was uh yeah apparently it was about two hours ago this happened you can see the spike there from the uh, from the coronal mass ejection that did actually go up to 2.3 gigawatts um rather not the 1.5 this is just from the zoom level um but yeah, so that used quite a lot of power, and I think it took these down to about about sorry, it took these tanks down to about 50% capacity. So this system is quite nicely spec'd for the for the, um, for the sort of uh, coronal mass ejections we get on Norvis. This worked nicely. We're happy with it. It worked, and we all went over and watched it because it was exciting and new. But basically, we're now satisfied that this is working well. And in the future, next time we have a coronal mass ejection on Norvis, we might not even bother to watch it. We certainly won't do any extra preparation because we now know that the system works which is really really nice and we've now yeah completely refilled the uh, the tanks along here everything's just working it's great the only slight downside of this design is that we are always using 10 megawatts to keep the um, umbrella defense idling but given that the um, overall power 
system, the overall power draw of the base is 1.4 gigawatts. We don't really care. And also, we haven't thought of a good way to, to, um, to hook this up to um, that wouldn't cause a uh, massive death when we realise that we've forgotten to come over and turn on the switch to make the uh, coronal mass ejection system safe again. So I think we're just going to we're going to accept the loss of 10 megawatts for the safety side aspect of it. So that's covered everything I've been up to. Over here, Tristan has been um, Tristan's been continuing with his skiing holiday. He's gone off to the uh, the snowy planet of Drakit, where he's basically doing the same thing I'm doing on um, Taishakuten, um, but he's he's slightly further ahead than I am because he went out here a stream earlier. Although it did mean he had a bit more re re rebuilding to do, I think, unfortunately. So as you can see here, he's got his. Um, He's trying to put together his uh, capsule production facility. He seems to have got all of his modules, so well done there. But he does also appear to be missing quite a lot of belts. So um, that's not gone quite as well. He's even managed to do a little bit of digging up of... Um of core fragments, so that's that's going quite nicely. And he's put he started to put in the uh, the cryonite uh, processing, and this works in a it doesn't work in the same way as the vulcanite processing. But again, there are various steps that you need to go through. You go through so you produce the um, you, you crush your uh, cryonite core fragment. No, you, sorry, you crush your cryonite core fragments. Ah, here, yes. And you get out core fragments which go up here. You get out the cryonite ore which comes down here to be crushed and then processed again down here and again down here where it's cooked cooked into a cryonite sticks. And this, this output then can be fed up to over here somewhere where he'll be shipping everything out by delivery cannon. So he's a, yes, he's a little bit ahead of me, but he's, he's doing basically the same sort of thing over here. Up here he's got the same sort of power stations, although he's gone for the other uh, square designs instead of put more of them. So it's it's again it's the same basic idea. We'll see if that's enough for his, his planet. I don't know. I don't know if mine will be enough for mine. And then over here he's got a um, a, a coronal mass ejection facility. I think I told you about this last time because he's, he he put them in quite quickly. That one, and then over here he's got the meteor defense guns. I still need to do that. So he's as I say he's a bit ahead of me. He's also belted out to all of his his, um, all of his uh, core mine patches. He's, he's done it by belt. I'm going to do it by train because I think my moon is slightly bigger. Citation needed. Yes, this is 498, mine 606. So there's not much of a difference there. But I I, I don't know. I, 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 trains are fun. <laughs> That's all the excuse I need. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he's he's been he's been building this up and in getting this working nicely, uh, or w get working towards getting it working nicely. While he while he was waiting for this to all build up, because you know bots take a while to do stuff, and he's probably going to need to bring more stuff out by rocket as well. He's also been putting in some. He's also been doing some extra stuff on Norvis, and he's been able to do this with the magic of the navigation satellite, which allows you to edit things on other planets, which is very very useful. So what's he been doing? He says he's put in a, a railway line that goes round the uh, the outside of the core processing facility. So that's this one. It does seem to be only be going um, from this direction round this way and down here it's not going in the other direction um, but maybe that's sufficient to uh, to reduce the uh, whatever traffic jams we're having because we did have a we had a big sort of gum up train jam in this sort of area here I'm not quite sure what caused that but it did happen and the trains do seem to like going around this way so they're, they're, they seem to be they seem to be happy they're uh, they're taking the new route and um, that, that seems to be working well he's made some of the oil stuff trains a bit bigger I think that might be the I, I, I don't know which ones but some of these trains were, were only two were only one twos and now they're one two one twos um, I wouldn't like to tell you exactly which ones because some of them are still short which I thought we were expect was expect I was expecting to be long maybe it's explosive I don't know but some of these trains have been made a bit bigger um, <laughs> I, yes I, I don't I don't know which um, and he spent some time answering various questions from people on chat about trains as well, because uh, he, he is our train guru, which makes it even more um, weird and ironic that uh, I seem to be the one who's planning to do trains on his outpost planet, and, he, and he's gone for just, for just belts. <laughs> so that's a little bit odd, but yeah, never mind. We're, uh, we're some, some, sometimes sometimes not even, even Tristan thinks that trains are a bit unnecessary. So, if you've made it this far, I hope that means you're enjoying the videos. If, if so, please subscribe to the channel and uh, come and, and come back tomorrow for the other half of this video, where I shall be talking about what Mike and Mark have been up to. Again, it'll be slightly um, truncated because of the um, the shenanigans with the server crashes, but I, I think that they've they've been up to enough that I'm th I, th I think I'm still going to have some stuff to talk about. Uh, there'll be another video on Sunday where we'll be, she'll be talking about my progress in Dyson Sphere program this week. But as of recording, I haven't actually played that game and got made the progress, so I don't know exactly what that'll be. Um, but I'm sure there'll be some. I'm sure there'll be some very uh, some, some extremely exciting pro pro progress in there um, as well. Um, if you want to join in the discussion about the game, come along to the Discord. If you want to, if you want to run a server to play this or Minecraft or Min Mindustry or various other similar sort of games, uh, check out treefall.be. If you go there and go to treefall.be/lawrenceplays and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, then you can get your first month free uh, for your for your service. Uh, um, 
I was going to I was going to advertise the um oh yes actually yes this is going to come out on Friday so there's still it's still not too late to get in on their um on their uh, Halloween special they have a competition where if you can find the 10 spooky things around their website then you can get an extra 3 months or you can enter in the draw to get an extra 3 months free so check them out as well and um thanks for and also always thank you for watching I'll see you on Monday for the stream and at the end of the week for the next lot of videos thanks for watching I'll see you then